Hello and welcome to this video where we'll be showing you how to create this amazing rustic post box. It uses reclaimed wood, is lockable and ideal for events where guests may wish to send cards to the host like birthdays, weddings or anniversaries. So stick around and we'll show you how it's done. As with any project, please remember to take appropriate safety measures when using tools. For the construction you will need all the wood prepared earlier, a drill, a grinder and sanding disc, some string, a set square, a tape measure, a pencil, some screws, mine are about one and a half inches, hinges and lock for the access door, and I've got some MDF wooden letters for decoration on the front. We'll also need some PVA glue, a cutting disc for your grinder, a hammer and panel pins. Start with the front panel. First, position your beading. Then, using your measuring tape, make sure that both sides are level. Mark the position with the pencil. Glue your strips together. Next, glue your beading in place. Then screw them down. The combination of glue and screws will make for a solid structure at the end. Now for the curve at the top of the post box. Our front panel measures two inches taller than our side ones. So we need to mark two inches down from the top. We also need to mark the centre point of the panel. Using your string and the pencil, mark the arch at the top. Now for the envelope slot. Position the flap, then using your tape, make sure that both sides are equal distance from the top. Mark with your pencil. Find and mark the centre point of your flap. This will marry up with the centre line we've already marked from the arch and will be useful when attaching later. Mark the positions on the flap for the brackets. I made these about half an inch from the edges. Then glue and screw these into position. Mark out the envelope opening. I had a small six inch ruler, which was the perfect template. Then using my set square, I made sure that the markings were all level. When you have the slot outline, you're going to want to secure the middle strip with panel pins to give it added strength. One or two on each side should do, then cut out the slot. Next, attach the flap glue it and then screw through from the back. For the base panel, glue each strip, then using panel pins, pin them together. This is definitely a two person job. Do the same for all the remaining panels. Panel pins are ideal here 
because it reduces the unsightly screw head's visibility. Some screw heads look rusty, too many look a mess. Once your panels are all glued and pinned, give them a really good sanding back and front. It'll probably get very dusty, so you might wish to wear some sort of dust mask. To add the arch to the back panel, simply place the front panel square on top, draw around it and cut it out. Now let's put the panels together. To connect the panels, you'll need to start with the base and the sides. Make sure the strips all line up as shown. Apply the glue and screw them together. We've put two screws in each strip. Try to make sure all the screws line up, it keeps your work looking nice and neat. Once the side panels are attached, it's time to attach the front. Remember to apply glue, and again, when applying the screws, make sure they are evenly spaced and level across the box. OK, now for the back. We need to mark and cut out the access door. So I measured 2 inches from the bottom of the panel and made my access door 8 inches tall. For ease, I've made it two strips wide. This means we've got reduced cutting. I'm also going to add some braces to the door and the panel. As you can see, the glue is not quite strong enough on its own. So with leftover wood, measure a batten for the door and the back. These want to measure at least an inch or so from the edges. Glue and screw these in place. Make sure you attach these to the inside face of the panel. We want these to be hidden from view. When that's complete, turn the box face down and place the back panel in position. It's time to mark out and prepare for the door hinges. We want the hinges to sit flush with the wood, so you may need to do some sanding here. Repeat the process for the door. When that's all prepared, we need to attach the back panel to the box. Try to make your screw position match that of the front. Don't forget the glue. Now is an ideal time to paint the inside of the post box. This is because once the lid's on, you're not going to be able to access the inside easily. However, your finished product may just be natural wood. So in that case, leave it be. When you're ready, attach the back door. The screws provided by my hinges were far too long, so I had to find some shorter ones. Make sure your screws are slightly shorter than the width of your wood. If not, they'll poke out through the door and look a mess. Make sure your door has a good fit by sanding the edges that need sanding. Finally, we need to add the lock. Mine is a simple barrel lock. Mark the position on the door and cut out the hole. Sand the area down, insert the lock and tighten it all up at the back. Make sure the lock is in good working order and that you're happy with it.
Well, that's it for part two. So join us for part three, where we'll be constructing the lid. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video useful and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with the new releases.